we don't have to wait until Christ's second coming uh, in order to overcome that. A couple of geeks in a laboratory can do it if you give them enough <laughs> time and money. You have a lovely passage where you say, looking at the world today, God seems to be making a comeback, but this is a mirage. God is dead. It just takes a while to get rid of the body. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think life has any meaning. Um, so so in, in, in that sense, it's, it's, it's not... It's, it not, it's not a strong counter-argument. I know that many religions and philosophies have based the meaning of life on death and what, ha what happens after death, but I think these are all fictional stories that people have invented uh, through history. They are not the truth. Because throughout history, uh, death was kind of the great equalizer. I mean, the poor people always told themselves, say, in the Middle Ages, yes, now these rich people, they have all the good things in life, but they will die in the end, at least that. Uh, just think what it means to be a poor person in a world when you die, but the rich continue to live young and beautiful forever. I mean, that's a cause for a lot of anger. Hmm. If you think about uh, the Bible, for example, so in the first book of Genesis, what God does is to create animals and plants and humans, and we now want to gain this ability to ourselves to manufacture uh, animals and, and, and plants and humans. And we even go beyond God. I mean, even if you believe in the Bible, the only thing the God of the Bible managed to create is organic beings. Uh, he managed to create the cows and the tomatoes and the giraffes and the humans, all organic. Now we try to go beyond the God of the Bible and create inorganic life, something he never managed to do, either according to the Bible or according to, uh, to, to, to biology. For four billion years, all of life was organic, and now we want to create inorganic life. That's, that's really, divinity is, is not far enough to describe what we are trying to do the soul and the afterlife and, and things like that, the main uh, task of God was to ensure agricultural production and victory in war. If you read really the, the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, it's all about agricultural production. It's about rain, it's about pestilence, it's about fertility. And um, now we are much better than the God of the Bible. I mean, in, in, in the Bible, you have these recurring droughts that the, as, as the people of Israel do something wrong, gods become angry, drought, no water. <laughs> but now, uh, Israel has built, in recent years, a huge desalinization factory on the shores of the Mediterranean, and most drinking water in Israel today actually come from, from these plants, from these factories. So we can make God as angry as we like, I mean, he can stop the rains. We don't care. We still have water mm. because science has managed to do, to go way beyond the expectations of the ancient Hebrews. Um, I think the most interesting place today from a religious perspective is Silicon Valley. Uh, my bet is this is where the new religions of the 21st century uh, are being created, will be created, and these will be kind of techno-religions religions based on technology, religions that make all the old promises of Christianity and Judaism and Hinduism and so forth, they will also promise uh, happiness and prosperity and justice and even eternal life, but here on earth with the help of technology and not after we die with the help of super superhuman beings. And in a way I would say that we've already seen the first big techno-religion in history in, in previous century, and this was socialism. Nationalism breeds conflict and war with other nations. It's still a danger in the 21st century, but in the 21st century, the much bigger danger is that nationalism will prevent us from um, countering the global challenges that characterize this century. There is no nationalist answer to global warming. You cannot solve it on a national basis which is why nationalists at least sometimes tend to just to deny the problem. There is no global warming. 
And similarly with disruptive technologies, like bioengineering or, or artificial intelligence, you cannot confront these problems on a national basis. If you have a ban in the US on genetic engineering uh, humans, it won't be effective if China or Korea uh, is not on board. And very quickly, the US will break its own ban because nobody would like to stay behind. You must have global cooperation to confront these challenges. Uh, and this is why I think nationalism in, in the present context is very problematic and dangerous. It doesn't mean that we won't go in, along that path. Um, humans don't always do the right thing. So the 21st century might revolve around the fears and problems and hopes of a new massive useless class. People who are useless, not from the viewpoint of their mother or, or children, but useless from the viewpoint of the uh, political and economic system. The signs leading up to the return of Jesus, those signs, they are real friends, 